from defeating the creatures within the Upside Down to fighting alongside Godzilla to solving crime. This time around, we get to watch Millie Bobby Brown as she is tasked with defeating a dragon in the new Netflix dark fantasy film alongside the incredible Angela Bassett and Robin Wright. But the question is, is this film worth pressing play on Netflix? Should you give it a watch? Well, we'll be discussing that and much more in today's spoiler-free review of Damsel. But first, let's get the conversation going in the comments below. Was this a film you all were excited to check out? But more importantly, once you've seen the film, let me know what you thought worked. What did you love about the film? What did you dislike about the movie? Let's have those conversations in the comments below. So I'll be honest with you all, when it comes to Netflix and how they do action movies and fantasy films, I have a little bit of a love-hate relationship because there are some that I enjoy because I love action, I love fantasy, and they have some good ones on there. But then there's also a lot of them that I just feel like are bad and they're just completely generated by an algorithm or they're just completely shot on a green screen and it looks bad so I say all that to say I want to give this film a shot because like I mentioned I love action I love fantasy and I'm a fan of Millie Bobby Brown I think she's a young Natalie Portman I'm a huge fan of Stranger Things I love her character in that I have fun with her character in Enola Holmes I love Angela Bassett and I like this director he directed one of my favorite zombie films in the last 20 plus years in 28 weeks later so what did I think about this movie is it worth checking out well let's start off by talking about the positives and I want to talk about how I really enjoyed this film and how it subverts expectations of these type of fantasy fairy tales that you've seen a million times before. As in this film, we find this sheltered young noble woman who agrees to marry a prince only to discover that his family intends to sacrifice her to repay an ancient debt and must survive being trapped in a cave with a dragon. So I just love it when we have storytellers that take these type of stories or tropes that you've seen a thousand times before and they put their own unique twist to it. They put their own spin to it. And that's something I really enjoyed about this narrative. And I want to give a lot of credit to the direction of this film because it was very confidently directed by Juan Carlos Fresadino, who really crafts a very visually appealing and interesting story that kept me guessing all the way through. He does a really good job of building suspense and knows how to capture the thrills and really makes this into an unexpected survival movie and he also sets up the situation well and adds a very interesting twist throughout this entire narrative. Now while there were some moments where I thought the CGI was a little bit questionable, I will admit for the most part I thought this film looked really well. Like I like the combination of the realism and the practical sets and I thought the cinematography really captured the fairy tale-ish appearance, especially when everything's going well at the beginning of the film and we get to see these massive castles which speaking of those moments there are some visual moments that I was very impressed by without giving too much away there are two scenes that come to mind that I just thought were beautiful there's one moment where we see our main character played by Millie Bobby Brown she's trying to sneak and hide away from this dragon she comes across like this ice cave and the way that scene was shot and the way it looked was just so visually striking there's also another moment in the trailer where we see these birds on fire that I thought was like a great metaphor was to come but then there's all also a moment again no spoilers but let's just say the dragon in this film has a moment where they're filled with rage and we see the dragon blowing out fire in the sky like a rain of fire and that shot was just beautifully shot and speaking more to those visuals, the color palette reminded me a lot of 2012 Snow White and a Huntsman, which is not a good film, but it looked pretty. And I thought that that visual type of image that we got from that film reminded me a lot of what we get in this film. Again, this is a beautiful looking film, if you ask me. Now, sticking with the look of the film, I'll be honest, the film takes a bit before truly revealing the look of the dragon, which also speaks, by the way. But the design wasn't working for me at first, but eventually it grew on me. Dragon is no House of the Dragon type of design, but it fits with the overall aesthetic of the film and the voice is something that also grew on me as the film kind of goes along. Now switching gears and talking about the performances here, starting off with Robin Wright, who I'm a big fan of. She plays the queen in this film. Now she's not in it a lot, but I do like what she gave us in the limited time that she was on screen as you kind of get to know her and see that she has her own kind of motives and the whole thing with the family sacrifice. But then switching over to one of my favorite actors of all time, hey, 
Deion T. I'm talking about Angela Bassett, who is also very limited in this role. And I wish she was positioned a little bit differently as far as what her character is given. But she really works for me again. She does a little bit more than what she's given. But I would also say as far as the rest of the supporting cast, everyone else was just serviceable. They were fine in the role. But the standout for me was 100% Millie Bobby Brown. Now, she plays a character by the name of Elodie. And her and her family and their kingdom aren't in the best position right now. Hence the arranged marriage between them and his very much more wealthier family. And as far as Millie Bobby Brown careers go, I think her best performance is on Stranger Things as L. But as far as the movies, the, the Godzilla role, like all those human characters are pretty forgettable and she does okay in them. But Enola Holmes 1 and 2 is really kind of, to me, shows her versatility as an actress. She could do comedy, she could do drama, she could do action. So I have fun with her in those roles. But I gotta say, her performance in this film, to me, is her best performance on the big screen or in at least a movie sense, right? I think she's really, really good in this movie. This is a role that is much different than what we've seen her do before as she's tasked with carrying a lot of this movie on her own because there's a lot of scenes where she's not acting against other actors. As she plays Noble really well, she's very capable in this role. She starts off as someone as a victim to this new family as she has to get married into, but eventually she turns into a warrior and she's very convincing she's believable in the more action heavy scenes and I'll be honest I feel like this was her audition tape to maybe getting a future role to play Laura Croft in like 10 to 15 years right like she is very capable in those action moments that we see in this film and to touch on her character's journey and how it ties to the themes of this film I thought it was very interesting to see how they used her wedding dress as a metaphor as she attempts to survive and goes toe to toe with this dragon you see her just continue continuously tearing off some of the parts of her clothes and it removing the idea of a princess and being controlled or being a part of someone else's story versus creating her own fairy tale. And last thing I want to mention going back to the dark fantasy action elements, I was surprised by how much violence was in this film. We're seeing people getting smushed, we're seeing blood being shown, people being burned alive. Like I was not anticipating how much more mature and how violent this film, again this isn't rated R by any means, it it pushes the edge of PG-13. Like I said, there's some blood moments, people getting crushed and burnt alive. I, I didn't expect it to be as violent as it was. Again, I don't want you all to think you're watching a Quinn Tarantino film, but again, it was unexpected in regards to how violent things did get in this movie. Now, continuing the conversation about the darkness of this film, which I do wish they would have leaned a little bit more on the darker themes, but for example, when we see Ellie getting married to this prince and we see the ritual being played out, as she's walking up to the ceremony, see these people with masks on I'm like yo this is dark and creepy and eerie again I wish the film would have leaned a little bit more on that but there are some moments of darkness that I really came to appreciate which just to kind of wrap up my prose to me this was just a really solid quintessential streaming entertaining movie with not just good but a great runtime that doesn't waste time on unnecessary exposition or silliness but the film does not come without its flaws as we transition into my critical criticisms and I want to start off with my nitpicks here which is obviously you have to suspend your disbelief whenever you're dealing with mythological creatures and dealing around with dragons but there are moments where without getting too much into the details when we watch them doing this actual sacrifice and the ritual and again if you've seen the trailer we see these characters being thrown off of a bridge and falling to the ground and again I don't want to give too much away but how did they survive that drop again small little nitpick got to suspend your disbelief but it was something that was like that's a pretty steep drop and there's also a scene later in the film that involves Ellie climbing up this like crystal cave and we have to see her climb down and I'm like that was a large amount of time that you spent climbing up and, and again it's just like little logical nitpick things that really kind of kind of bother me some points which I gotta mention my one last nitpick and we'll get into my real criticisms there are moments where we're watching this is a straight up survival movie where she has to sneak around kind of be quiet but god damn it Ellie the screaming, the yelling was a little bit un unbearing at points. Like, could you just shut up, Ellie? The dragon's right there. Again, these are just small little nitpicks that I just had to mention. But to get into the nitty gritty, to get into the things that did bother me, talking a little bit about the story and how it was written, how I felt it was a bit too generic and on the nose with its messaging. To me, they definitely could have did a better job of structuring the plot, but also handling most of his characters in their arcs. Like when we meet Ellie and her family, her dad, who's the king, her stepmom, played by Angela Bass and her sister, 
and a lot of the other who I'll talk about here in a second, a lot of the supporting characters were just very one note to me. From her father who has a change of heart at one point that comes out of nowhere to her little sister who's just used as a plot device to who I love so much, Angela Bassett, I personally didn't buy her being the wife nor did I feel like she was really being a stepmom to her kids. Again, the whole family dynamic just didn't feel natural. It felt forced and it just didn't feel organic to the story. Even looking at the prince played by an actor who I enjoy, which is Nick Robertson, he was extremely miscast to me in this role. And again, no fault to the acting. I just feel like a lot of the supporting characters were written very bland. Now applying that to our main character, Ellie, who without spoilers, I did like that the film didn't do like this 180 where we meet Ellie and she's like spoiled or terrible or she can't do anything. She's not capable of doing anything. Like, no, they don't do that. Like when we first meet her, she's chopping wood. She's very noble. So when you see her becoming the warrior, to me it was very believable but I do wish that the film would have liked to have seen them showing her overcoming a fear or making the situation have more of an impact on her personal journey like there's her people of the kingdom in the film that doesn't really do a good job of connecting her and caring for them and, and having to be a motivational factor of her getting back to her kingdom it just should have had a more of an impact and a better understanding and more development between her overcoming her fears but also connecting to her kingdom and continuing the conversation about Ellie, again, I thought Millie Bobby Brown was the best part of this film as far as the acting go, because obviously she gets the most to do, but again, she's left on screen, like, there's like 30 minutes of this movie where she's just in the cave trying to fight against this monster creature, and I thought that she gave me a compelling, interesting performance, but again, going back to how this is written, the dialogue that she was getting, the script that she was given, the dialogue just felt very weak. For example, Ellie has these inner moments where she's talking to herself, and I thought that a lot of those scenes were just written poorly to me. Now, the film, to me, did suffer from some pacing issues. I felt like it slowed down in the middle half of the film. It would have benefited from, like, another subplot or shown us what was happening in between Ellie going against a dragon. Like, show us her father, who, again, when now, spoiling thing, he has a bit of a change of heart. Like, show us that. Show us the conversation between him and the queen and him trying to reverse a decision that he makes. Like, I thought that the film would have benefited with, again, Millie does a good job of keeping my interest, but it should have been cut in between of, like, what's going on outside of this cave. Like, I thought it would have benefited from that. And last thing I want to mention, as a fan of fantasy, I do wish that the film would have just explored more of mythical tales and have more creatures and lean more into the fantastic classical element like a huge missed opportunity again we got dragons we got these like little bug things that you always see in the film like give us more stuff in the cave like trolls or other monsters like i wish they would have had like more of like a fairy tale s type of mythological creatures involved within this narrative so with that being said those are my main pros those are my main cons before i give you all my score and my overall thought i want to take this time to thank you for making it to this point of the video and with with that being said, make sure to leave your thoughts in the comments below. Hit the like button if you appreciate this review and consider sticking around and subscribing to the channel. Overall, compared to the majority of Netflix action and fantasy films, Damsel was unexpectedly entertaining. Millie Bobby Brown plays a role that is compelling and believable. As a victim of circumstance who transforms into a warrior, the director of the film is confident and creates a visually appealing fairy tale that goes wrong. The writing, though, is what is the criticism for me. It lacks in fully developing and exploring its story and its themes in the main and supporting characters character arcs but overall this was a surprising survival film with a little bit of edge and a lot of unexpected violence i'm gonna give danzel a 3.5 out of 5 for netflix action fantasy film standards but overall i'm gonna give it a solid 3 out of 5 so again i have fun with this film i think millie bobby brown is a young natalie portman with a big bright future ahead of her i'm so sad that stranger things is ending but i'm excited to see her kind of continue to to grow as an actress and do more of these action films do more drama do more comedy so again 3.5 out of 5 for netflix standards but an overall 3 out of 5 and i recommend you all give it a watch and when you do let me know your thoughts in the comments below i'm so excited to see what you all thought about this film again if you have seen it let me know what worked what didn't work in the comments below thank you all for watching today's video you all stay safe you all are awesome and i'll catch you all on the next video Yeah, yeah, yeah.